All right, um, I'm the opening uh, remarks for this thing. So I'm going to be light on content and hopefully high on enthusiasm. Hopefully you've had enough coffee this morning because uh, I'm setting up the table for at least 50 presentations behind me that are going to blow your mind. Um, I was mentioning to Ricky here in the front row. Um, I come to a lot of these conferences and I get asked to speak and I listen to other people and sometimes you do have your eyes roll back and go, oh, if I hear that guy again, I'm going to kill myself or poke my eyes out. Truly what Epi's built here, um, and quite frankly, if there was a bomb in this room and exploded today, I think crowdsourcing would go away as a concept. There's that much talent in this room. So, um, so I thank you for allowing me to open the remarks. Um, as I said, this is the United Nations of crowdsourcing. You look down the roster of speakers, and I'm sure people in the audience, uh, and hopefully you can hear me. I don't like being trapped by the stage. Am I, for the back row, am I being loud enough? Love the thumbs up. Um, there is one, but if you can hear me, I'll, I'll just keep going this way, yeah? Are you hearing me on video too? Excellent. Um, so yeah, managing directors, region heads, some great authors. It's funny, there's uh, myself and Ross Dawson who's coming on right after me. I've known Ross maybe 10 years in the internet. This is our first time actually meeting uh, live. So it's, it's funny how the more digital you are, here's a, a tweet for you. The more digital you are, the more you love to get together in real life to actually meet somebody. It's a weird paradox and axiom, but I, I fully admit it. So you will learn a lot, I'm sure. My hope is take advantage of this. Network, ask questions, share, um, tweet, whatever you want to in terms of taking advantage, because this is truly a bona fide, great conference. So the irony is, why get a Canadian to come all the way to Singapore and actually be the opening remarks? And I will say this, there's a few of us in the crowd, I think. We are the number one connected nation. We watch more video. Uh, we surf more, we spend more hours online, we are number three on LinkedIn, we're number five on Twitter, we're number seven on Facebook. And I would love to tell you that it's because of our education system, we produce great smart people, or our cosmopolitanness as Canadians, we love to go around the world. For anybody that's hosteled in the world before, you know how many Canadians are out there, you know, having a party in a hostel somewhere. But you know what the reality is? Anybody know the reason why we're so far online? Yeah, it's damn cold for about six months of the year. So, uh, so that's, I wish I had more credibility on that. So four really quick examples. I looked for the last three days of great, great crowdsourcing examples. So these are my Academy Awards for the last three days. Has anybody seen this video? It's done by a Dutch um, band called Light Light. And the, the, if you go to donottouch.org, it'll blow your mind in terms of um, interactive crowdsourced entertainment. Essentially, you see how these cursor buttons on there? You follow along the video the way you like it and actually use your cursor and you can see the crowdsourced um, trail of everybody before you. So there's a reason why there's hundreds of different cursors and it's quite interesting. There's a bit of nudity in the video so it's quite interesting where people go to where the nudity happens but uh, I'll let you discover that for your own. But very, very cool. I love what Benjamin Moore Paint is doing. In fact, they've upped their spends by 70% in marketing based on this project alone, which is they are crowdsourcing where you should paint main streets in North America. So the economy has depressed a lot of main streets in, in towns across uh, North America. They're trying to figure out which ones they should actually have a bunch of color consultants to actually paint 100 streets in North America. Very cool. Any Veronica Mars fans? Anybody know Buffy the Vampire Slayer? She's like a darker, kind of like later Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Anyway, the most popular Kickstarter campaign ever. They're up to about $5 million now. Um, and so Warner Brothers has given them the go ahead. They're going to do a movie based on this TV show that existed called Veronica Mars, all crowdsourced. And finally, I hate to say this as a Torontonian, our mayor's kind of got a lot of headlines. Anybody read, read about the Toronto mayor? It's our, he's our crack mayor now. Um, essentially, there's a video out there um, that shows our beloved Toronto mayor um, doing crack with a bunch of friends. And uh, Gawker, who everybody knows, I think, has um, got a crowdsourcing campaign. So if you raise $200,000, we will show this video of Toronto's mayor having crack with these people. So um, a bit <laughs> infamous as well. So there's a birthday in the audience. Um, crowdsourcing, at least according to Jeff Howe, he started to think about this term eight years ago. So if you've read the book by Jeff Howe, great book. Uh, I know crowdsourcing has been around forever, but as a fully minted term, it's about eight years old. So um, we are fast coming to our adolescent years, I guess. Um, if you look around the room, you know, this conference by itself is a testament to the fact that there's been a lot of progress. I think uh, there's something like 2,000 different firms in the world that have a crowdsourcing entity. Um, 
If you look at growth, I think growth in the last year, something like 88% growth in this industry. So this is not like your 5%, 5% every year. Um, crowdsourcing is growing uh, by leaps and bounds. So I'm sure we'll see a lot of other examples over the next couple of days. But I do think if a one human year is seven dog years, um, we're somewhere like close to about five. So we've been around for eight years. There's a lot of progress that's happened. There's gonna be humongous progress over the next five years as well. I do a lot of work with this guy. Anybody know who this is? Don Tapscott, he's still got some level of, uh, he's kind of the father of collaboration. And uh, he um, always says, you know what? Paradigms are changing five times faster than they ever have been. Um, so the amount of time that it took for the last 20 years is gonna be compressed into the next four, which I fully agree when you look at our digital space. And this photo I love, this is the, the two popes being rung in. I guess Pope, was it Pope Benedict and the new guy? What's the new guy's name? I'm a Catholic, so I should know this, but um, Francis. Francis, yes. So same place, same photo, and I know people have, have cast aspersions to, ah, that can't be right. But even if it's only half right, look at the difference in that photo, and, and that's eight years, right? So imagine this and what's happening in crowdsourcing. Maybe we can find a, a visual after this event in terms of a crowdsourcing eight-year um, evolution. At the very basis of it, I think Bill Joy said it best, um, he's the co-founder of Sun, he said, no matter who you are, most of the smartest people work for somebody else. And I don't care what crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, whatever you want to call a platform, probably the notion, uh, this notion is probably true for, for the success of crowdsourcing. And now, I think when Jeff Howe invented the term crowdsourcing, he was thinking more along the lines of maybe how to get tasks done, how to get creativity done. I don't know if he envisioned Kickstarter. I don't know if he envisioned all these different finance raising platforms and uh, all the other exciting possibilities going on. So question, uh, and I'm going to get into this in our panel hopefully later, is crowdsourcing the new social media? Is this something we want? Is this something possible? Um, can this exist? Um, I'm not too sure. Myself personally, you know, and, and I'll give my Google ad here, I guess. I looked at the number of results for social media and the number of results for crowdsourcing, we got some catching up to do. Um, you know, 42, 4.2 billion to 7 million is a bit of a, a landslide, but for me, social media is a dirty word. Uh, and it's strange given how many conferences and how many things I go to to say that, but I really think social media as a term will go away and it'll just become the oxygen we breathe. I think from a crowdsourcing standpoint, I love the fact that versus social media, I think it has four things going for it. It's got purpose. There's usually a lot more purpose to it. Social media, you know, the three Kardashian sisters are amongst the three top 100 Twitterers in the world, and I don't know what the Kardashians have as a purpose. So um, much more purpose, much more passion. I'll see it in this room over the next three days, I'm sure. Um, people that are in the space remind me of bloggers back in 19, or probably 2001. You know, we are at the cusp and the ground floor of what's happening. Merit, I love meritocracies. If you're good in crowdsourcing as a member, you get more access, more influence, more what have you. Um, it's great. And finally, and I, was, I think this has happened over the last two years, there's much more of a money trail in crowdsourcing than I think social media ever has had. Um, you know, the number of people in banking and finance and people in venture capital that actually are interested in crowdsourcing amazes me. So even if you don't think we'll get to the number of search terms in, in a future world, we'll definitely get to um, some monetary interest and a money trail. So I wrote this crazy book, and I just, in, in one visual, I'd say branding and what we're going to talk about today, consumer engagement, has had many different evolutions. And I think if you are a marketer or in creative or branding and cannot provide a form or a platform to get your customers to participate in what you're doing, you're probably failing as a marketer or a creative person. And what crowdsourcing does is make that easier, um, make that hopefully a lot more distributed. Um, we're, I was just quizzing Ricky before I came up. I did some research recently, we said 26 industries. Which 10 industries are gonna go through the most upheaval, the most change over the next three to five years based on progress of technology, new connected media? You know, here are the 10. And I've highlighted the ones in yellow that I think are really interested. Um, education, healthcare, finance and banking, and consumer household goods. Um, you know, those are four that I wouldn't necessarily have said would have been the elite or the vanguard of, of technology progress. Most people believe these are gonna to be tossed and turned um, like crazy over the next five years. So 
If I was a 23-year-old startup again, I would totally be doing crowdsourcing thing around education. That would be my public confession. So if there's anybody 23 out there, steal my, uh, or can I live vicariously through you and actually hopefully see some results. We also did what are the 13 meta trends driving in the world. So these are the 13 trends that no matter what business you're in, hopefully they're driving some of the stuff. And if I look at crowdsourcing, I can't see one that it doesn't put a check mark beside. And I think there's, there's a reason why it's growing at such a great rate. And in just setting up the day, I'd, I'd love how the organizing crew and Epi in particular has set up the day uh, or the next three days. Um, first day, we're talking about this crazy world of creative and branding and marketing and how consumer engagement happens through crowdsourcing. Tomorrow, we're going to go deeper into how society runs, how government and not-for-profits and causes and actually a whole bunch of things from a citizenry uh, standpoint. And then finally, it's the money trail and business models. So I love how it goes. It's almost the trail in terms of how crowdsourcing has been accepted around the world. Friday's interesting. There's going to be a, a roll up your sleeve session with a whole bunch of startups, I think, as well, which is great. Um, so what are we going to learn today? Because I'm the consumer guy today. We're going to learn nine, at least nine different things. I promise you that, probably a lot more. Google's going to talk about how crowd's working in the enterprise. Uh, I've left that generic and open. Uh, I know Shelly. Is Shelly here yet? Where are you, Shelly? There you go. You snuck in the side. She's going to talk about crowd branding. She's got a great platform called Chaotix, and uh, I'm going to be particularly interested in that. Uh, Iyaka, uh, Iyaka, sorry, I got that wrong. There you go. I knew I was sitting beside you. Um, we're going to talk about crowd innovation today. Um, I think uh, we're going to talk about crowd creative in terms of how to do better ads. Um, you know, we're going to talk about how crowdsourcing can be disruptive from a media standpoint. You know, I know um, there's a, a song, I, I missed the song last night, so I got in late, but uh, I'm very curious. I know, um, is it Maya? Maya. Maya, we're going to talk about crowd art and creative and how things are happening in that space. Image Brief and Simon's going to talk about crowd photography. Um, Simon's going to talk about how crowd design happens um, through his very successful platform, 99designs. Roger's going to talk about crowd fashion um, and, and his platform called Closet. So by the numbers, and I've got the wrong hashtag here, go nuts, it's called CSW13 if you're uh, tweeting out there at home. Um, here are the numbers. We have five days together. We have 51 presentations. I counted about 16 different countries that are actually on stage. So Epi, you've done a good job making this truly a global world. And if anything, 89% growth expected in crowdsourcing this year and, and more expectations for the future. So um, this truly is something exciting. It's growing. It's very, very interesting. And my hope is you learn a lot. Um, and I guess to, just to go around the room, um, who is here clearly as a learning objective, doesn't know a lot about crowdsourcing, wants to learn a lot? Hands up. OK? Good. All right. Who is? Uh, who has been in the crowdsourcing business for the last five years and actually knows quite a bit and is here more for maybe networking or collaborating? Hands up. Okay. Now here's the last one, and this is usually uh, where you have to show a little bit of chutzpah. Um, who's the smartest person in the room on crowdsourcing here? <laughs> I want to know. I, hey, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm here for learning. I'm going to be here all the time. So anybody? Anybody? By the fact that nobody wanted to put their hand up, part of that is you don't want to be that guy. And part of it is uh, I think uh, all of us can learn a lot about crowdsourcing in this thing, and, and you're going to do that over the next few days. No presentation by Canadian isn't complete by putting Wayne Gretzky up here. Everybody in Singapore know who Wayne Gretzky is? Hockey player? Ah, good, good. Um, uh, this statement was attributed to him, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is, which I think is what crowdsourcing is all about. And just a special congrats again to Epi. I know I sent you on this trail a few months back, and I think um, there's this place in Africa where um, zebras and wildebeest have to go across this Mara River. Um, like millions and millions of these animals all herded up, and you can actually see a video if you jump online on YouTube. You know, who's going to be the first zebra and who's going to be the first wildebeest? Because guess what? There's about 50 different crocodiles ready for the first ones to jump in the water. And so I don't know if this conference is your crocodile or if you're one of those ones that get across, but uh, I think it takes a lot of gumption and courage to actually lead a group of people across the river. So um, uh, I, I think this is brilliant, and hopefully I've seen some successful one-day conferences that you've done around the world. I think um, this is going to lead to a lot of good things.